very very cool okay let's go next slide okay now this is just a risk disclaimer that we must put for every single zoom i'm okay, telling you guys that this zoom it really is for educational purposes okay um we'll be giving advice as to how we take our own trades but how you want to implement that in your own strategy that's completely up to you and of course like i said results will be um, you know, based on hypoth hypothetical performance and of course we can track as best as we can. But some clients win more than us, some clients win less than us. So our whole goal of today is really just to impart this knowledge to you so that you guys can have your own semblance of, um, how to say, uh, individuality when it comes to taking your trades and of course personal responsibility as well. Uh, if you guys really believe in a signal, use higher lots. By all means, doesn't really matter. If you don't really believe, either keep out of the trade or don't take it at all. It's really up to you, lah. Okay. Now, why you guys should be listening to this, ah? Uh, okay. A lot of you guys do not understand trading, especially the losses portion. If you guys are winning, okay. For example, like Sofiana, you're doubling, tripling your account. Okay, on like a freaking, I don't know, like every two or three days, you're doubling, tripling your account. Then okay, lah. But you guys, you must understand this also, lah. Sofiana, you're listening. Okay, you must understand the losses. One day, things might might go against your 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 trade, lah. Okay. Now. Most clients also do not possess enough skills to be independent. So looking at the signals might be like a lifeline for you. It might be, oh shit, they gave a signal that I blindly think. But if you guys do not look at the chart, you don't understand what's going on, then you might be very scared. For example, if you see the trade in drawdown, you're like, oh fuck, how come the trade is in drawdown? I don't know what to do. Why? Because you don't understand the reasoning behind the trade. If you guys understand that, okay, um, you know, William gave this signal because he looks at maybe trading patterns, right? He looks at head and shoulders, he looks at um, evening stars, morning stars, so on and so forth, or if or if um, Nick gives a signal, you might be looking at order blocks on 15 minutes. Okay, if we impart these kinds of skills to you guys, then you guys would have the ability to fold, you know, take partials, even when you want to, and if it hits SL, you guys also understand why it hit SL. Uh. Okay, and lastly, this is the most important, uh, a lot of you guys are texting uh, you do you guys do not have the emotional control when handling losses when you guys win 30 50 percent of the account you guys be like oh wow it's a good day then when you guys lose like maybe five ten percent of the account suddenly the whole world comes crashing down oh fuck i don't know whether trading is meant for me blah 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 okay you do not have the emotional control that's something that you guys must go and learn and of course this only helps if you guys take the trades and learn it by yourself i cannot teach you emotional control Okay, some clients when losing, uh, they literally don't give a shit. Some clients when lose a bit, uh, they care a lot. So it's very, very individual. Now you guys have to go ahead and text us. That's why I say premium is there. I'm there on, on, on the back end in premium. Nick is on the back end. Uh, William is on the back end as well. Okay, so basically we're always there. The traders are back end as well. Okay, we definitely know what we're talking about. So do not be shy. Go ahead and ask us. Okay, because it is your money on the line. Okay. Okay, now. How to maximize today's Zoom? Now, today is going to be educational, okay? So what I need you guys to be doing is take down all the important information, okay? And of course, ask questions like Josh in the group, okay? Any questions, go ahead and ask. Any feedback, go ahead and say, all right? Do not be afraid. Like I said, you guys are premium clients. You guys are here already. We're here to give as much value to you guys. We're not here to scold you, not here to say you're a shit trader, blah, blah, blah. Okay, we're here to help you guys. So you guys must basically put your ego aside, okay? Don't be paisay. Just go ahead and ask questions. Okay, obviously, lastly, obey the rules, don't be greedy. This, once again, uh, it's not a get-rich-quick scheme. All the signals given, proper analysis. However, this is not a casino that you guys come to. Do not go ahead and what, full margin the entire thing. You guys have a $1,000 account, don't be trading like what, two lots, three lots, like some clients are doing. It doesn't make sense. Then when they, when they go into drawdown, uh, they're like, oh shit, I'm 10%, 20% down. But what the hell, our signal is like so far away from SL. Okay, just be careful. Okay, now I'm going to be passing the time on to both of the main traders. Okay, these are the guys giving the signals every single day, going through CPI with you all, okay, winning and losing with you all. So I'm going to pass the time on to Nick and William. They're going to be going over trading view basics. Okay, now I'm going to give you guys about 10 seconds as I take time to go and switch speakers around. So 10 seconds, go ahead and take out your note app on your phone, pen, paper, whatever you need. Just go ahead and jot these things down. Okay, super important stuff. Or if you guys are on your computer, you guys can bring that up as well. Go into trading view with us uh, and then start plotting and charting these order blocks, la, how to input your indicators, so on and so forth, and how to go and save this as a profile. So next time when your trades running, uh, they are forever going to be saved. Okay? So you guys should definitely be doing these things right now. Uh, okay? And when you guys are ready to move on, I need you guys to type two inside the chat. Okay, once everyone here, everyone here, 
Okay, there should be what close to 50, 60, 70 people uh, type 2 inside the chat. Only after every one of you guys have typed 2 inside the chat, uh, then I'll pass the time on to William and Nick to go over training group basics. So go ahead, type 2 inside the chat right now. Okay, we'll keep, uh, we'll keep the energy high, try our best to keep things engaging for you guys because trading view is just looking at charts. Like, can't be that exciting, but I think um, you heard William talk on the TikToks, on the Zooms, he's pretty entertaining, so he'll be going with trading basics. So it's quite cool shit. Like. <laughs> hello, hello, hi everyone, I'm William. Right, okay, so I'll be going through with you guys some trading view basics. Like. So basically, uh, the basic indicators, the basic tools, or the basic skill sets you guys actually need, right? to uh, maneuver around trading view so you can actually identify potential setups right enter potential setups and of course uh, do so very efficiently and conveniently la. so that's why i'm here today to actually guide you along with your trading journey la. right okay so let's say uh, for example all right let's look at USDJPY, right so i assume right you guys will know how to set the time frames right over here right if you guys don't know right it's very simple you see okay right over here Right, you select the pair you want to trade, right? You see right beside this time frame, you see this arrow right over here, you guys can see, right? You press it down. What you want to do, right? To add the time frames that you want to see and access easily, right? You see the star, just press click on the star and it automatically appear like one minute, two minute, three minute, four minute, five minute, so and so forth. Lah. So that's how you actually have very quick access to your time frame. So everyone can understand this, right? So the time frames I normally use, right? Uh, it's mainly the daily, Right, the eight hour, the four hour, the one hour, the thirty minute, the fifteen minute, you know, the five, three, one minute, right, and three and the three days, right. But sometimes, if you guys want to go on a higher time frame, you guys can actually go and start the weekly and the monthly. The yearly don't really need to do because yearly is too, um, it's too slow already. It's too big of a range, so we do not really want to do that, right? Because it takes one year to actually, uh, form a single candle, okay. So the max you should actually go is probably a monthly, right? That is enough, right? Other than that, uh, it's up to you to go and play around right and do right the most popular time frames are again one minute three minute five minute 15 30 minutes right one hour four hour eight hour the daily three days one week and one month lah. so that is what you guys would actually want to do and do your basic charting on them so that's step number one okay to actually uh, favorite your time frames so you have easy access to them okay that's number one so number two right so uh, what I want you guys to normally uh, be acquainted with right, or be very familiar with is your buying and selling of positions. So if you guys have your trading view open right now, right, I want you guys to open it up and see that there's a few options over here. I want you guys to actually click on this option. right? So you see the T, two options under the T. Click on it, right? There's a long position and a short position. Okay, so long position is very simple. Lah. Right, let's say I want to open a long here because it breaks this um, this high over here. Open a long and it automatically come out with this. Okay, so how you actually shift your stop loss and your TP, right? You see this um, this function or this tool right over here, this small square, you can shift it and adjust it around. Right, you adjust it, let's say your SS under the low your, and your TP is maybe like at this resistance right over here. La, or maybe at the uh, psychological level, 134, okay? So once you've done it so, right, notice on the right, there's a green box, the red box, and the grey box. So the grey box is your entry price. Right, that's the least concern one. The two main concerns you guys will need, right? Or to take note of is the green and the red. Okay, so the red is basically your stop loss. So it's 133.487. So that's your stop loss. So you can key that very quickly into your MT4 where you actually execute a trade. So that's a stop loss. And the green box is your TP. Okay, so you can key that very, very quickly into your MT4 as well. Right, which I'll be teaching more uh, later lah, if you guys do not really know how to use your MP4 on your phone. So how we normally execute trades and set our stop loss and TP right is uh, through your phone because your phone is the quickest and the most convenient way. Within 5-10 seconds, right, you guys should be able to enter your positions and set your SL and TP really. Super, super fast, 5-10 seconds. Right, that's the max you should take. Anything more than that, right, it means that you're not really familiar with MP4. So please go uh, and practice lah. If you guys do not really know how to do it, go and practice on a demo account lah. Huh? Practice on a demo account. Don't, don't, don't practice on your live account because uh, it's your real money lah. Do not open any test trades on it lah. Okay. So that's uh, for the setting of buys and the sell. So sell is basically the opposite, right? So let's say you short here, it's just uh, inverted lah by uh, 180 degrees. So this is your green box is your TP, the red one is your SL, something like that. Okay. So everyone can understand me so far, right? This is very, very simple and basic stuff. So type 
three in the chat, you guys understand me so far, right? If you guys want me to repeat again, I will get it repeat because I want you guys to be very, very familiar with this, okay? Because the trading, uh, the trading week starts tomorrow, okay? So we want you guys to be very well equipped, very, very familiar, right, with trading view, so you guys can enter the signals on time very, very quickly, okay? Can I? Right, ready? Three, Francis, three, Avaro, Ben, Samuel. Supriya Gupta Vivian. Okay, great. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Many of you guys are Okay, right. So I will continue on lah. Okay. So that's for the setting of the buy and sell positions. Okay. So that's number one ah. Right. So next, right. Next, what I want you guys to be very familiar with is this two right over here. So you can see right under this um like in a way crosshair, right? Is this line uh, sloping upwards at forty five degree angle, right? I want you to click on it, and right, you can see multiple options. Trend lines. You guys will know lah. Trend lines. You just basically click. I just go and extend it out. This is your trend lines. Very, very simple stuff. Let's say here, here's the trend lines, right? Uh, next would be the arrow, right? Arrow is not very, com uh, not not really necessary lah. So I won't, you guys won't really need to go through it. The next one, right? You guys really need to take note of is the horizontal lines and the horizontal ring. Okay, so horizontal line is basically this. You click on it, right, and see where you can plot your support and res resistances. So for those of you guys that actually came down for NFP. Our CPI live zoom. This is one of the tools I sometimes use. Okay, horizontal. Line. So basically, your lines. I set one here. I set one here. I set one here. These are your lines. Okay. However, some of you guys might think, okay, it's very very messy, right? Because it's one horizontal line throughout my entire screen. I do not want, right? Because on the left, it's it's, it's very very messy. It's not very well, um, a uh, well, uh, position, right? So another one you can actually do is something called the horizontal ray. So it works something like a horizontal line. So you click on it. Right, and press down here, or rather click on here, right, instead of showing one flat or rather one long, sorry, one wrong long horizontal line across, right, uh, it shows uh, um, just this. On the left side, you won't show anything. You just show the line starting from where you actually pressed on it. Okay? So that's, um, right, three, only use phone. Correct, correct, use phone only. Right, so this is actually how we actually do for our CPI and set all the very simple and basic support and resistances stuff like horizontal rates okay oh yeah one more thing right one more thing guys same thing like how i did for the favorite thing on the time frame if you guys want very easy access right to your indicators again you click on it right you can see the star over here right just star it star it you can see this thing that popped up very easy stuff right oh, so trend line and here so the more you add the more that this will actually extend lah. so this is the one very quick and convenient way you guys can actually have access to your favorite indicators your favorite tools on trading view okay so very important right the buy and sell right the trend lines the horizontal ray the horizontal lines right these are the few very basic ones that you would definitely need in your plotting and your charting on the trading view okay so some of you guys have asked me the question, okay? So how do you actually draw your rectangular box, your purple box? If you guys watch TikTok, watch YouTube, right? There are a lot of boxes. Even Nick also uses them, right? To identify your OB, your order blocks, right? And maybe sometimes your inefficiencies and stuff. So very simple, okay? You click on the brush, right? Select rectangle, right? Let me start it. Rectangle. Click on it and just draw the rectangle. Simple as that. So this is probably one of your potential order blocks, right? I'm just, I'm just uh, trying off the top of my head, right? This is your order block or your demand zone. And that... That's done. That's how I actually set it. And if you guys think that, okay, maybe purple and yellow, right, it might not be very uh, pretty. I want to change it. So very simple. You click on the box and you see the multiple, um, the multiple uh, options here, right? You can actually click on it and adjust. So this is basically your outline, right? Maybe I don't really like um, um, yellow. I want it to be the same as the purple. So I let me choose purple, right? And that is purple line. And the, the fill function, right? The purple box, maybe say you don't like purple, you want green, just click on green. And then that's how you actually do your, um, adjust your your coloring of the box lah, right so this is one very simple and let's say right you guys don't want to confuse yourself you want to say okay this box is a demand zone this box is supply zone how do i actually indicate it very simple you click on t right over here your text right you select uh, the color that you want black right and um go to, after that once you're done click on settings right and you see the text here let's say this is demand zone right? demand zone okay and that's how you can actually do it, right? Let's say it's too small, right? Then you adjust it, become bigger. Like let's say 28, demand zone. That's how you actually do it, very simple. If you guys don't want it to be in the center, right? You can adjust it via text alignment right over here. On the right, right? If you don't like it outside, you can put it on the top. Simple stuff like that. Okay, everyone can understand. So this is how you can actually um, do your plotting, do your charting. Lah. 
if you're very uh, familiar with what you normally plot and chart, like how me and Nick usually does, you guys don't really need to actually set labels for your indicators. Right? But if you're very new, it's good to have, all right? it's good to build a good habit of setting your labels for your indicators so you can actually correctly identify or very quickly identify oh, what is what, what is what. So you can actually accustom yourself to what you're actually plotting to the chart, plotting to the mar- uh, in the market, right? so you can actually identify very uh, good positions quickly. Lah. So that's what I normally do as a beginner trader last time. Lah. Yeah, so that's for the very, very simple um, uh, adjustments and uh, tool you can actually use for your trading. Okay, so that's for um, that's for the very simple stuff. All right, so one more thing, right, that many of you guys have also asked me, right, is the FIPS, right? Because I know I always recommend you guys to use the FIPS, right? So how do you actually plot the FIPS, right? Very simple, okay? So the third row here, over here, Click on it, FIP retracement, you can go and start it if you want. You look something like this, right? You click on FIPS. So how do you exactly draw the FIP very clearly? Okay, so let's say, right, it's a bullish impulse. I have a very bullish um, bias to uh, in this pair. So I want to look for more longs, right? And currently, price is retracing. So how do I accurately draw the FIP, right? Simple, you look at the start of the bullish impulse movement. Let's say, for example, here, for the sake of this example. This is the start of the bullish impulse movement. You click on it here, and you extend it all the way out till the end of the bullish impulse movement. So for me, right over here is right over somewhere around here, right? So I extend it out right over here. This is your impulse. So this is your bullish uh, impulse movement, which we, where you can then draw the FIP, right? So one is here, zero is here, right? Then from there, you can identify, you can see multiple zones, 0.382, 0.5, 0.618, and with the multiple colors to indicate. But if you want something very clear, I say, okay, this is too colorful, too messy. I want something very clean, very simple. Very simple, huh? go click on your FIP, right? You show this option what you can do is click on settings right you click on the settings and you can adjust it and see the levels that you want to actually play la. so 0, 0.382 0.618 0.51 something like add 0. 0.786 0. 0.236 also can they can adjust your colors okay you can adjust your colors all right and uh next would be um the total lines la. right you all can you have your free right so you just play around okay very simple so this is your fips so everyone can understand me. Any other tools that you want me to actually go through to aid in your training journey? Okay, I think um, we've gone, gone through a lot of stuff. So it's a little bit fast as well. Uh. So if you guys um, understand, just type 4 inside the chat for me, Ken. Yeah. Just type 4 inside the chat if you all understand, okay? Yes, okay, very good. Fair, Samuel, Terrence, Vivian, okay, Chunky, George, Francis. Okay, Van. Okay, okay, okay. A lot of you guys understand. Okay, very good, very good. Keep typing four. Come, I don't know whether all of you understand yeah. or not. Okay, those that never type four, uh, then you all might not understand. Okay, it's a lot of stuff that that. Hey, who's who's this? Dream. Hello, I say type four, not yes. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Next time I say short, then you long how. <laughs> ah, <laughs> Boyan. Yeah. yeah, thank you for typing a long sentence. But all I need, all I need you to do is type four. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, FIBS, uh, this is actually pretty advanced. Maybe you guys don't know how to plot the impulse movement yourself, so on and so forth. Mm. Okay, however, these are the things we're looking at ourselves. Alright, so I think majority of you guys just need to know how to go and set the long position and the short point. position. And I think inputting a few indicators is going to be the most important. Okay, drawing FIBS and everything, this is going to be a bit more advanced when you guys are more familiar with the chart. So maybe let's go ahead and go through indicators. indicators. How do I actually go and add indicators and what indicators you guys actually want to go ahead and use? Now, William doesn't really, really use indicators. So He does more of price action and purely looking at naked charts. Yes. Okay. And of course, trading patterns like drawing minor support, resistance, and of course, his morning star, evening star, so on and so forth. He's very good with that because he's very in tune with the market. The person that uses more indicators, okay, a bit more technical would definitely be Nick. So Nick, maybe you want to run them through how to go and add indicators and what you actually use so these clients can add it themselves. Yes, for sure. Okay, Ken, very simple. Hi guys, Nick here. Yeah, so it, uh, very simple, lah, right? So let me just clear the charge from the clutter that, you know, that happened, lah, explaining all these, uh, all these very simple concepts. Now let's go into the more nitty gritty details. Now, for indicator, as you can see over here, there's a very, very big um, indicator sign over here on the top, top somewhat yeah. top middle yeah. la middle yeah. middle to to yeah. center yeah la but essentially yeah la center but it's over here <laughs> yeah center top a bit left so essentially over here you click on it and whatever indicator that you want to use like say so I, as you can see here i have start quite a few right there's some ict there's some 
um, moving average, um, sessions indicator. So for example, if I want to click sessions, a uh, session indicator, as you can see over here, I clicked it already. It is being automatically applied onto my chart. Over here on the top left hand corner, you can see over here sessions, right? So obviously you can change the settings as well. So let me just close this chart, uh, close this window. And, and if I click the settings, you can see I can change the color, whatever color I want to, right? Change it to this color, then you'll probably look a bit more gay, but essentially, as you can see, la, if we go into the higher time frame, it will look something like this, right? And obviously, this specific indicator tells me, okay, or what time what session happens, la, right? For, for example, green is London, right? This orange is actually an overlap of the red and green, right? The the uh, the red color is actually your New York session, right? And then your blue is your Asia, your Asia, Asia session. <laughs> Asia, Asian session. Asian session. session. Okay. Yes. Nick needs an English lesson. Yes, I need an English le lesson. <laughs> okay, but essentially, <laughs> essentially, essentially, um, this is like one of the, the indicators that I used to use um, when I first started trading, like because obviously I wasn't very acc accustomed to when the sessions start, right? Because when, uh, like for example, London, right, it starts at three, right? So as you can see here, this candle itself, before that, it will show a separation. Right, this separation over here. Let me just zoom in for uh, zoom in for you guys. It shows it shows me here. Okay, this is where I'm going to be taking my trades because this is where volume is usually higher. Same thing for New York, right? So normally New York normally starts at eight o'clock, right? So in this case over here, it turns orange. Now why why it turns orange? Because obviously London overlaps with New York, and that's why there's the overlap part. And obviously London closes at around like say. 12 a.m. La, but it's not, it's not really any of your concern because we stop trading around 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock max. Right? So yeah, this, so this is just one indicator. La. Obviously, you only add other indi indicators you can, like moving average. Right? Moving average. Add it and then you have your moving average on the chart. Right? You want to remove it, just go to your top left hand corner, press X. You see this volume indicator here that was automatically placed when I open a new chart? Press X and now you have a clean empty chart for you to chart on. Okay? If you guys understand what I what whatever I just said, type one. Okay, type one in the chat so that I know you guys understand what whatever I just said, because it's a bit more tech tech. Okay, we'll be going over how to use MT4. Now the important things for MT4 is how to actually go ahead and set SL to BE and how to take partials. These are the two main important things we're gonna be focusing on today. Some trades are, for example, the USD JPY trade we gave on Friday. This was a sell limit order, if I remember correctly. Yeah. It was a sell limit order and some clients didn't know how to go ahead and set sell limits. So we'll also be going over what is market execution, limit order and stop order. Okay, stop order should be something you guys are familiar with already. Lah. A lot of you guys came for CPI, took huge wins on your account. So you guys are already familiar with stop orders. So we're going over the three different kinds of orders you can, you can set in your MT4 and then how to, set uh, how to take partials and how to set SL to BE or set SL to profit. Okay, and this one, uh, William, you can take over and go over how to use MT4. La. Everything's in the slides already. Great, okay. So, Daniel said, very important. Huh? Right, okay. So, step number one, I don't need to go through too much. Uh, log your training account because if you guys do not know how to do it, then what the fuck are you guys doing here? <laughs> right, because you guys should know how to log your training account. Right, because you guys have been trading yourselves. Right, so I'll just skip over this part. Right, number two, how to add trading pairs. All right, you guys should definitely know this as well. Okay, right. but there's some clients, ah. Huh? Okay, when you say, oh, take Euro USD, then you say, hey, uh, my MT4 don't have Euro U. How, ah? Uh? Is it the broker got problem? <laughs> or the broker <laughs> or the broker don't have Euro USD? No, 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 it's not. Okay, so everyone go ahead and do this now, okay? If you guys can bring up your phone, you guys can still add the trading pass before Monday comes around. So go ahead and do this, okay? Number one, press on quotes. Okay, I'm going to give you some time to bring up your MT4, okay? Okay, on your phone, on your phone uh. yeah, Sometimes got dot P or so, all, all ah, that yes, weird, weird stuff. Correct, okay, correct. yeah, for those crypto accounts lah. So go ahead on quotes. Okay, press the plus sign, and then type in the currency pair you want to trade in the search bar. Then add the pair. Then you guys can go and um. Okay, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, right? Okay, here demonstration. Okay, demonstration. So you see, right over here, there's a few options down. Press on quotes. Press on the plus sign on the top right. Uh, key in what you want to add, right? Let's say USDCHF. Type in USDCHF, you can see multiple USDCHF or USDCHF dot pro, right? Because most of you guys are using pro accounts. You just add it. After you press the plus sign right over here on the green color, that's it, you're done. It will be added automatically right over here. Then you can start trading already. Okay, so right now I want you guys go and do it, right? The pairs they want to trade. Add it now. 
I just want to say, right, some of you guys may add the pair, right? As you see, there's two. So some of you guys may add the wrong pair. And when you add the wrong pair, okay. So when you when you add the wrong pair on your watch list, you will essentially see that your pair is being grayed out. Being grayed out means that your, you, you, can, you cannot trade that, that, that particular pair on the broker. So what you need to do is go and add again, right? Add a different pair. I mean, the same pair, but with a dot .pro or dot .p yeah. or whatever, whatever that it requires you to have, right? Add it in and you should see that it should be something like this again, right? So it should be whitened. Okay, it should be whitened and the chart should be moving. But obviously, now the weekend, none of your pair should be moving unless you're using Bitcoin. Yeah. That's about it, okay? So go ahead and do that right now. Then you can actually go ahead and orientate and go and change um which pairs you want to be listed first one and so yeah. forth. So you guys know which pair we, we normally trade la. Euro U, uh JP, USD, GJ, USDJ, XAU, USD. All these pairs you guys can put to the top. So when you give a signal, you guys don't have to scroll through like fucking like 100 pairs la. Mm. Okay, if not, it'll be very confusing for you guys. Now, different pairs are, for example, more of the um how do you say uh, like the exotic pairs, ah, exotic pairs like yeah. USD, SGD la. I don't know some of you are trading that bullshit <laughs> Don't know why you all want to trade that shit Okay, if we don't normally get signals for it You guys can press the, the pencil button on the left hand side yeah, Right over here Alright, right and you here. guys can go ahead and delete the pairs that we normally don't trade as well If let's say suddenly we want to trade a pair that's not listed uh, Then you guys know how to go ahead and edit as well Okay, now for this uh, screen here You guys can go ahead and screenshot this Okay, in case you all forget Okay, I'm going to give you all 5 seconds ah uh, Five seconds to go ahead and screenshot this. Okay, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, next. Okay. Okay, so next, right? Very, very important, ah. Uh, make sure you keep your uh, eyes peeled to the screen and ears wide open, right? Because I'll be explaining to you guys the difference between market execution, stop orders, and limit orders, right? So market execution, right? What exactly are they? So market execution orders are basically orders you want to enter right now on the spot. Okay, you're entering it right now. So uh, let's say we give a signal, for example, like. GBP JPY buy 160 uh 160.000 right SL 163 uh TP um sorry SL 159 TP 161 right so these are the orders we want you to execute now so this is our ex market execution order so how do you do it right very simple right so these are the steps right so you go back to your watch list or your quotes right you press and hold the pad you want to trade so let's say USDCHF press and hold you show up these few options trade chart details so you press on trade and you'll be shown to this screen automatically, right? It will show that market execution right over here. Okay, so let me shift this, right? Market execution right over here, right? So these are the lot size you want to open. Your stop loss key in, take profit key in, and press buy or sell by market. So these are your market execution orders where you enter the position on the spot right there and then, okay? So these are your market execution orders. So next, we'll be setting a limit slash stop orders. Okay, so CPI, we'll be using purely stop orders. But there are some times in the signal, we've said, okay, buy limit, sell limit at that price. Okay, do take note, buy limit or sell limit. So that's where we want to teach you guys how to set your limit and stop orders. So how do you do it is somewhat very, very similar to your market execution, execution order, except for one fact that you'll be adding one additional step before placing an order, okay? So once again, go to your quotes or your watch list, press and hold the pay on a trade. So let's say USDCHF.pro, Right, press and hold, press on trade, right? That's where the key difference comes, okay? You see market execution, you press on market execution and you'll be brought forth four different options. Buy limit, sell limit, buy stop, sell stop. Okay, so depending on the order that we actually give in the group, right? Let's say buy limit, right? For USD CHF, right? So we press on buy limit, Right, then that's where you'll be adjusted to be shown into this screen right over here. So you'll be shown buy limit, the lot size you want to open, at what price you want to actually enter. Right, so price, let's say you give a buy limit, USDCHF buy limit 0 0.9000. Stop loss 0 0.89, take profit 0 0.91. So once all that is key, right, that's where you can press on place. Right, then your orders will be automatically placed. Okay, so these few steps, all of you guys can understand, right? Can you guys understand? So type one in the chat if you guys can understand. I don't want to leave uh, any information out. If you guys don't understand, right? Just say so I'll go through with you. Okay? Because this is very important now, guys. Very, very important. Because this involves your opening and closing of the positions in MT4. Okay? Because this involves your money, right? Obviously, you want to play around with your money, right? You want to win, right? So in order to win, you've got to be familiar with your MT4 app. Okay? So I don't ensure, okay, when you say buy, right? Then you press sell. Then suddenly, hey, what the fuck? Why you all hit TP? I hit SL. Because you do 
you do something wrong, right? So we do not want that. We want to avoid this kind of situation. In situations where we win, you guys should win as well. Okay, ah. Uh? Okay, great. Somebody type one, 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 one. Okay, great. Okay, Andrew, in trading view, how do we set a particular indicator to screen the whole FX money and alert us each other to make if since I can say alert for a specific FX pair? Okay, um, I don't really okay. Yeah, Nick, you want to answer that because you use indicators more. Okay, so okay, so just let me just read the question again. Uh. Okay, yeah, uh, because it's a long question. Okay, how do we set a particular indicator? To, to screen the whole FX market and alert us if conditions are met. Okay, okay, okay. So this one, um, I don't think it's very possible on trading view. Uh, I mean on yeah. on GPS, uh. no on oh, on yeah. on on other brokers, right? Uh, or like sorry, right, uh, basically, uh, other charting platforms, they they may help, they may have that. But essentially, right? Um, what we use is mainly just alerts, right? And this alert, I'll go through later as we are explaining um the trade reviews okay and how we set the alerts lah. so i think the main the main point about setting alerts so that you guys uh, will be notified whenever price hits that particular price point then that that is all you need to know lah, essentially and how to set it across multiple pairs all right okay but obviously there's going to be some limitations if you're using trading view free you um i personally use trading view pro and because of that i can set more alerts than you guys okay but it's up to you. If you guys want to get Trading View Pro, then you guys can go ahead and do that also. Lah. It's really mm -hmm. up to you. But of course, like I like said, $16 US. Yeah, about $16. So per if month. that's yeah. per month, that's you know worth it for you guys. Then go ahead and do it. Lah. We have some questions like Xavier. Uh can we what is this? Buy stop limit. <laughs> limit. What the hell is a buy stop limit? <laughs> you mean buy stops buy limit, is it? Xavier, what do you mean by buy stop <laughs> limit? That's buy stop and buy limit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> you cannot confuse the two. Ah. Huh? So which one are you talking about? Stop or limit? Which one? <laughs> Oi. Now, if um, what is this? there are some occasions when I try to set the buy limit, but it doesn't okay. allow you to. But it's very close, is it? Is that what you're saying to the current price? Mm. Ah, then just mark execution ah. If you're yes, setting correct. it within the spread itself ah, then of course it's not going to work ah. Might as well just go and enter now ma. Yeah, right? right. If you're saving one two pips. Just enter market. Just enter la, this market execution. Don't matter. Yeah. Okay, let's say we give the signal. Normally, it's just going to be market execution. Just go ahead and enter. <laughs> if you give a limit, we'll tell you it's a limit. Mm -hmm. Now, very rarely, we're going to be using stops. Okay? Unless it's Security. buy stop, sell stop with high volume. Mm -hmm. Why we don't use stops? Okay, maybe that you guys are thinking about that as well. Why do we not use stops? Because normally, we wait for a break and we test. We're not just aiming to eat the break, right? We want more confirmation. So if there's a break, okay, good. We can set most likely a limit order. At that previous support, and then maybe we take the sell limit instead. Correct to say? Instead of mm. just doing a uh, sell stop, then you're yeah. holding the trade, see some profit, and go back to break even, then you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> okay, yeah. Can I? Okay, very good. So don't be Pisces, hey, just ask questions. Yeah, okay, please. we'll be here to answer everything. Okay, uh, now this one important how to set your stop loss to break even. Okay, this is super, super important because there's sometimes we send the instructions into the group, right? Uh, running like 15, 20 pips. Right, take parcels and set stop loss to break even. So let me cover the set stop loss to break even part first. Okay, so you guys don't know how to do right this, how you do it. Okay, so for the sake of the example, right, let's say okay, uh, Euro JPY, right, sell one lot, right. I want to set stop loss to break even because the instruction was given out. Right, how do you do it? Is okay, you press and hold the position that you want to set stop loss to break even to. Right, so you press and hold Euro JPY, sell one lot. You'll be given these few options. Okay, close, modify, trade, close, buy, chart. Right, so what I want you guys to click is. Or the press is modify. When you press on modify, you'll be given this user interface. Right? You see stop loss and take profit. So the stop loss, you modify it to your entry position. So you can see right over here, your entry position is 130.541. So setting stop loss to break even means you set your stop loss to 130.541. Once that's done, you press on modify and that's it. That's, you're done. That's how you set stop loss to break even. Okay, it's super, super important. Right? Because setting stop loss to break even ensures that you are running in a risk free trade. You need to secure your profits. And you do not want to risk risk additional already. Okay, so it's basically a risk free trade. It's either you win more or you win lesser, but ultimately you still win. Okay, so that's basically the function of setting stop loss even. Okay, so that's uh that for SL to B. So everyone can understand, right? Type two in the chat, you guys can understand because this is super super important. I cannot stress the importance of setting stop loss to break even because this uh ensures right whether guys you guys are up or down or break even for the day. Okay, so ultimately you guys want to be up, right? So make sure that you guys. Follow the instructions carefully, right, to the T, right, when we actually send the instructions in the premium group. 
Okay, Kenna? Okay, great. I see many, many of you guys uh, replying to. Okay, great. So I'll move on. Right, Q&A. Right. Um, oh. Sui Yuan, yeah. SL to BE don't take into account consideration the, the charges. charges. Correct. Correct. It doesn't, doesn't take into account consideration for charges. However, this should be very, very minuscule. It will be like what one, two cents based on your lot sizing. So it really shouldn't really matter. Mm. And comparing to the uh, profits that is running, right? It should be very, very minuscule. It should be very, very uh, negligible. In yeah. fact, normally right? if we say SL to BE will also be mentioning take partials, correct? Yes. So you should be securing profit already and then setting the rest of your trade into SL to BE. Mm. So let's say you're in $20 profit. Okay, you take half, you earn ten dollars already. You set SL to BE. You don't take into account the charges you lose. Maybe what two cents, three cents. It really shouldn't matter, lah, because that's the spread. So again, do you understand? Oh, okay. Yeah, one Wanli understands. Okay, yeah. one Li. Okay, one yeah, Li. Yeah. You understand, lah, right? You're wondering yeah. if you set SL to BE, we will lose, right? No, that's exactly what what we're we're talking <laughs> about. You set SL to BE, we ensure you don't lose because you take partials as well. Ah, so you understand already. Okay, maybe this is something you guys were missing out in your trading uh, strategy. Okay, maybe that's why some of y'all win, some of y'all lose. If this is, is basically what problem you're having, can you guys type yes inside the chat? If this is a problem you're having, uh, can you type yes inside the chat? So I know this is a problem you have. If this is not a problem you have, can you all let me know and type no inside the chat also? Just be completely honest. And then I want to see what proportion of the clients um, are having problems with setting SL to BE and wh whether they win or lose. Okay, just be completely honest. Then I can take note for you guys. Okay, there's some yeses, some noes. Okay, and about half, half. And those that are typing yes inside the chat. Yeah, these are the clients that, you know, you guys actually send us, hey, how come I lose today? Huh? And those that type no inside the chat. These are the clients that actually are winning on a daily basis. Okay, so maybe this might be the problem in your trading strategy. And we're actually addressing that today. And that's why you guys are premium clients because you want to look at the problems you're having and solve it on a daily basis. Okay? Uh, Tim is asking, how much should you take partial? Okay, personal, uh, personally for us, we can do 25 to 50%. It is completely up to you. Some clients take 80%. You know, they want to secure wins for the day. Some clients take 20, 10%. It's completely up to you, Adeline. So whenever you say set SL to BE, we must do so. No, Adeline, it is completely up to you. Sometimes, okay, to be honest as well, we don't set SL to BE. You might say, okay, you guys can take SL to BE, but we don't. Okay, and why is that the case? Because we can risk more. We want to be protecting you guys. That's why for every trade that's running well, we normally just say set SL to BE first. We don't want you guys to risk money, especially if let's say we know you guys for the week, the first few days, maybe um, the signals have not exactly been going exactly in our direction. We maybe want to secure a bit more profits here and there and uh, protect your account. So we say set SL to BE. So it is completely up to you. But of course, we've been trading for months and months and months and months and months or years, and we're definitely up. So we don't really care. We can raise the money. We just go ahead and just leave our SL open. But sometimes we do take SL to BE as well. So I say it's completely up to your own discretion. Sometimes we take SL to BE and then we just SL to BE. Yeah. Some clients don't give a shit and let it run all the way, right? For example, um, the NZD USD short that we gave on Friday. Okay, what happened was we actually let it run, even though we wanted to protect you guys and say set SL to BE. Of course, if you SL to BE, there's always the option of reopening. Ma. Okay, you guys can always reopen again and again and again if it keeps hitting SL to BE. It's completely up to you. Every signal is still valid. So because I'm asking, if I set SL to BE and I SL to BE, does that mean the trade is done? No, the trade is still valid because it has not hit SL. You guys can still re-enter. For us, NZD USD, we literally didn't give a shit. We let it run all the way. And that's why we actually ended up with a big win on Friday itself. TP. Yeah, we ended up with TP, okay, for NZD USD because we didn't care. But it did hit SL to be multiple times. Yeah. Right. Okay. So when set SL to be, can I set my SL to more than what my initial profit execution to more profit? You mean setting your SL in profits? Yes, you can do that. You can definitely do that. Yeah. Very good question. Uh, Quan, right? Yeah, Quan. Recently joined us, I think. Yes, yeah. Quan, you recently yeah. joined us. It's a very, very good question. You can. Right, you can, you can do so. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So some of you guys have been asking how to close partials, how to take partials. Okay. So let me go through that portion with you. Okay. Because this is the second portion, take partials. So how do you exactly do that? Close trading full, I think you guys know. Yeah. Lah, huh? Yeah. Close trading full, I guess you can always confirm no. Lah, right. So press and hold the trade, the pair you want to close, press on close and just close. Right. Okay. So this comes the part, right? Here comes the crux. Partial positions. How do you do it? It's just one additional step you guys will need to know. 
right? Or, we, or rather, we need to do. Right? So you press and hold the pair on a trade, or rather, pair on a close, right? So let's say in this example, you use JPY someone lot, right? Press and hold, you show these few options. So press on close, you'll be given this interface. Okay, so now, right, here comes the key difference. Do not instantly press on close, right? Because what you do, it'll be closing your full position. So what you want to do, right, is to actually modify the number you see right over here in this red circle, right? So let's say SL to B, take partial, say SL to B, okay? So I've opened one lot here. I want to take partial. So let's say I want to take 50% partials, right? So instead of one lot, you open 0 0.5, right? Already close 0 0.5. So you key in here 0 0.5, and then you press close, right? That's it, you're done. You automatically close half of your position or based on the lot size, you actually do it here. So it doesn't need to be 50%. Let's say I want to close 20%. So instead of 0 0.5, I key in 0 0.2 and press on close, right? Simple as that. So that's how you actually do uh, taking partial in profit, okay? Mm, okay, Elroy. Uh, if it's normally take passes 10 pips, then the RR and uh, will be imbalanced. So should we open bigger or what? Okay, doesn't mean you open bigger, but you can take partials less. For example, mm -hmm. if I say take partial, take 20%, uh, take 10%, 15%, 30%, up to you. Like when I say I take partials normally within the range of 25 to 50%, first take partial normally, I just do maybe a 25% mm -hmm. take partial and then we let it run. Uh, Okay, the, but of course, this is up to our own discretion. Now, of course, the lot sizing on a funded account is going to be much bigger. So we have more leeway when it comes to this. If we're opening 20 lots, I can take like five lots, take profit first. Yeah, so for example, right, just let me just give you a very brief example. If I'm, see, I'm up 20 pips, my stop loss is 10 pips, right? I'm up, I'm up once to two RR. What I can do is at once to two RR, for example, if I actually 20, 20 pips, set as to be take partials. Right at that point of time, you take fifty percent, right? And why, 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 why would I even want to take fifty percent, right? Very simple, cause at fifty percent at two R means I secure my initial risk. So if I risk see, um, hundred dollars, right? I'm up a hundred dollars. I close fifty. Sorry, I'm up two hundred dollars. I close hundred. So I actually already like secure my hundred dollars, lah. So at the, at this point of time, I still have hundred dollars running, right? And, and, and at the same time, at the same time, you're already in risk-free position. Your hundred dollars can run all the way. You have secured hundred dollars in your account. Now, this is why we want to take partials, right? Because we want to secure the bag. You want to make sure that we don't leave uh, money on the table when it's free, right? When it's free, you're in profits. You want to make sure that the risk is off the table. Okay. Mm, okay. Um, I think Tim, you're asking Quan's question, right? Um, okay, Quan's question was, when you set SL to B, can I set my SL to more than what your market execution was to take more profits? Yes. What Quan is saying, uh, Tim, is he wants to set his SL in profit and you can do that as well. Okay. And what you guys can also learn further down the line, that's something we can do next week, is doing a trailing stop loss. So yes. milking the entire trade. For example, NZD USD, lah. that's something we could have done. Take trailing stops. But yeah. this is something a bit more advanced. I don't want to tell you to take trailing stops until you guys are more well-versed. Okay? So I think you guys know how to close partials already. Okay? Then we'll be going over the trades of this week and going over um, exactly how we went through all these trades and our analysis for these trades. Okay? Wait up. Uh. Okay. So let's go over some trade reviews and then we'll be going over some wins uh, for this week. Lah. Of course, we can go over that first. Okay? For the clients that won, you can see your name here. You guys can type me inside the chat, lah, okay? <laughs> okay, if you guys see your, your name, I'll go type me inside the, the, the chat because you guys definitely won this week. I want to celebrate the wins for all the clients that won. The clients that didn't win this week, then you know you guys have some work to be done and we're here as your premium admins to make sure this is done, okay? So congrats, Seal, Fez, Brian, Baby, okay, blah, 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 Joe. Okay, blah, 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 Sofiana. Of course, Sofiana is a fucking beast. Okay, if you're in the chat, then obviously, you know, you can go and type me inside chat because you're fucking destroying the market. Lah, okay? Okay, Kelvin, Vivian, Clarence, blah, blah, Quan. Ah, Quan, you see, you're asking questions. Okay, so you see, uh, the, 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 the clients that are asking questions uh, okay, are the ones that are gaining a fuck ton of money. Uh, Quan, this is disgusting. Okay, although you're lot sizing a bit degenerate, okay, I must tell you first. Okay, five lot for 360 USD gain is not very normal. Lah, okay? Let's be careful with a lot sizing, but you obviously won, so good for you. Okay, Clarence, yeah, M Star. Okay, fucking disgusting. Okay, if you guys see your name, uh, just go ahead and type me inside the chat. I want to know that you guys actually won. Okay, yeah, so shit ton of testimonials coming in for just this week itself. Okay, so I want to see more of this screenshots every single day when you guys win and take the trades. It's our job as your premium admin uh, 
to make sure that you guys are winning on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis. So if you guys okay, constantly do this, I assure that you guys are going to come up with a very, very amazing skill set at the end of maybe one or two months. Okay, keep doing this. Okay, if you guys don't see your name here, then there's some work to be done. But let's go over some trading view charts. Okay, we'll be analyzing the trades for this week. Not every single one because that's going to take too much time. Okay. So let's clear this. Let's go with some trade reviews for some of these trades. If you guys want to go over a certain trade, you guys can type inside the chat as well. All right. Okay. Yeah. So Nick here again, right? So yeah. Okay. So let's just go go through one of the trades I call on Thursday, right? And that would be the GBP US dollar. So at this point of time, um, obviously this is one of the trades that I took, right? And I I obviously noticed that there was a break of structure towards the upside over here, a break of structure over here, right? And over here, I entered when price retraced. And the moment price turned bullish on the five minutes, I entered a position over here, a market execution, which stops below the five minute low. And obviously targeting a minimum of one to one, like minimally, right? Just to make sure that you guys are, are safe and you guys are up for the week. But obviously it went higher. I personally closed out here when it starts to reject this area here for 1.75 RR. So for those of you that held or put partials and uh, like two partials and put SL to break even obviously came back down to break even la, right so this is one of the of the trade that we took right uh on Thursday live on the stream right and obviously the the technicals behind this is because there was a bit of structure here right a very strong bit of structure here but obviously on the one minute it would look it would look a bit different la, right so if I come here and show you the one minute close bullishly right with a body candle closure above which is why I decided to take this trade Right. If you look at the one minute, there's even a order block retest at this point. Right. There's an order block retest over here, and that is where I entered from. Okay. Understand? Okay. Yeah. So on Friday, I gave a uh your US dollar sell as well, but unfortunately, it got stopped out. Right. And I mean, it happens to the best of us, even to like good traders. Right. So just let me just show you what uh how how the trade essentially went lah, and um essentially. I took this trade here around like five plus in the afternoon, right? And I have put my stop loss above the 15 minute order block, the buy to sell here, right? The 15 minute order block was here, right? And as you can see, I wasn't aware, right? My mistake, I wasn't aware that there was news that was going to be very impactful, right? And obviously it shot through my, my stop loss by, uh, by like one pip, 1 1.5, and then it decided to melt 80 pips after. So both pairs, lah, right, bro? Like, honestly, we can't do much like when price does this kind of thing. Like, I mean, obviously, I could I could change my stop loss to a, a larger area, but that wasn't part of my plan. So things like this, I can't really control, right? So yeah, so this is one of the uh, uh, one of the examples as well that, if, for example, if there wasn't news, price would still continue to melt, but perhaps maybe not in such a uh, an impulsive fashion. Lah. Maybe it would like, you know, come down slowly, but even so, this was my analysis and I'm I'm happy that it was right, but my I my my account took a loss lah for that, so that's fine. Okay. Now obviously let's look at some other trades that we took. So okay, let me just go back and see. So there was the okay. Ah, okay, GBP JPY. So William, you want to take over this? Yeah, GBP JPY you caught on Friday, if I'm right. Yeah, so let's get down to it, right? Although it's in um running um running loss, but uh yeah, I'm still holding it, man. All right. Oh, wait, what's this? Oh, how many is here? All right, great. Sorry. A little bit stupid. Okay. So how it, it was given is on this four hour uh time frame. Okay, so uh don't mind me, I'll clear the Yeah, hold on. Uh. Yeah, let me remove drawings. Okay, great. So how was it given, right? It's because of this, right? It's because of this structure over here, right? There's a HNS form, heads and shoulder. Okay, so uh, let me bring up my tool. It's a little bit advanced, but just uh, let me illustrate for you. Lah. Okay, so head and shoulders, where is... Oh, is he... No, wait, no. <laughs> here, here, yeah, right, right, right. Head and shoulders, uh, let me select head and shoulders. Uh, here, right, okay. So here, left shoulder, head, right. Oh, Jesus, okay, wait. Let me just move to my back. Okay, head and shoulders, right. Left shoulder, head, right shoulder. Right, so at this point of time, it was given somewhere around here, right? So, uh, shots were somewhere around, right over here, right? It broke so, uh, the neckline somewhere around here. Stop loss was above this uh low, above this high, somewhere around here, 
right? And TP is set at somewhere around here, the, right? One is two uh, risk to reward. So it almost hit our stop loss, but it didn't, right? We're still in the trade, it's still running, right? And it's purely because of that. That's why we gave this heads and shoulder on a four time frame. And that's why we actually gave a short entry right over here. I once broke a neckline. It went in our favor for a little bit before uh, retracing upwards. Lah. But I didn't hear stop loss, right? Stop loss was well positioned, well placed above the high right over here. And that's why we're still running. Lah. It's about 60 pip, uh, plus pip stop loss. Right, okay. Stop loss is 322, in fact. So it's around here. Lah. Yeah, it did not hit. It wasn't close to our stop loss at all. Right, yeah, about 10 pips remaining. And our TP is somewhere around here, lah, right? 164 point. What's this? Like? Yeah, about, about there. It's about there. Right? So it's a little bit of a riskier trade, but we're still very confident because it's a four hour hits and shoulder. If I don't know what hits and shoulder are, it's basically a super bearish uh, technical pattern, right? And especially form on a four hour. So basically how it works, right, for the time frames is trading patterns tend to perform very, very well on the high time frames. So for example, big patterns like hits and shoulders, they perform very well on a four hour. That's why we do not need much confluencing factors to actually enter a shot on GJ back then on Friday. So that's why we gave a shot, right? So that's for GJ. Right, yeah, and you guys actually requested for uh NZD USD as well. So let me just bring it up. NZD USD. Right, uh, let's go to here. Right, <clears throat> NZD USD. Okay, so NZD USD, right? Hit TP. Right, so one look at it. It was given on the one hour time frame. Right, so uh, how it was given? Right, it was basically a range. Right, resistance, support. Right, and sure. what happened? Right, what happened was once price actually broke the support over here, we actually entered a short. Right, a short somewhere around here, lah. Right, then uh, TP was set somewhere around this support, and stop loss was set at uh, above the high right over here, lah, somewhere around here. Correct, twenty pips. Right, um, zero point six two seven seven. Okay, no, let me just adjust it. Okay. Right, uh, so you can be more accurate with it. This is 62985. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, it's about the same. 985 and TP is 62173. Yeah, somewhere around there. La. So it's 1 to 2.46 risk to reward. So, yeah, as I was said, right, it's above this high and it shot all the way downwards to hit this order block or right over here, like our demand zone. Or you can always set it at the uh, support right over here, which will eventually will hit TP. So how it was given, right, is because range trading broke out of the support right over here and it melted all the way down. Lah. So the signal was given at uh, 843, 843, 843. Yeah, here. This exact candle, right, 843. So this 830 candle, it was given right over here. It went against our favor for a little bit, right, but because of our well-placed um, stop loss, right, didn't hit our stop loss and melted all the way down, consecutive red candles down. And it hit our TP lah, non-stop for two hours straight, right? So I believe many of you guys have taken this trade. So how many of you guys took the trade? So if you haven't done on Friday, can we still end on Monday? Uh, you mean for NZD USD? Um, no, because it hit TP already, it's too late. When we're talking about GJ or pound yen in particular, uh, right, right, right over here, uh, you want to enter, I would say you can choose to enter right at a much better position, but I wouldn't want to overrisk. So if you are really in a position, I suggest don't overrisk, right? Just let it run. Right, don't open anything, just let it run. Okay, you haven't entered it yet. Uh, you can choose to enter, giving you a very nice one is to five. Lah. Yeah, you can choose to enter also, right? But I enter because of the HNS, so it's really up to you. Okay, why you can choose to enter it, right? It's also because, right, as it forms, right, there's a mini resistance or rather a four, I would say mini, there's a major resistance form right over here, which it rejected countless of times, right? And there's many weeks, right? One week, two weeks, uh, three weeks, four weeks. There's four weeks, right? Basically, 16 hours worth of candles of rejection. So we can uh, safely assume that it's a very strong major resistance level that price refused to break through upwards. Okay, so that's why you can also choose to re-enter. But for those of you guys that are already in the position, right, don't want to take on more risk, just leave it be. Right, if you want to, you're okay with taking more risk, you can choose to enter another shot. Lah. But I recommend not doing so. Lah. But for you, for those of you guys that haven't entered yet and wants to enter, Yes, you still can enter, or I'll buy it being very, or rather very, like, a little bit more risky than usual. Okay, we have very full confidence that the HNS will play out, so do give it some time. Like. After all, it's on a four hour time frame, so it definitely take hours or even days to for it to play out. Like. Okay, so that's for GJ. Okay, so these are the two uh, pairs that I will go through. So, Nick, do you have any other pairs you want to go through? Uh, 
Uh, okay, just let me uh, scroll through my watch list and see what other trades that were called. And maybe we'll end it off with that one last pair, all right? Okay, so, um, oh yeah, then obviously those of you that won um, go right? CPIUS should know, right? Because obviously, it flew 50 pips towards the upside. So, let's see, what other trades? Okay, let's see, we have GU. GU on a Monday, if I'm right? Monday or Tuesday? Oh, Tuesday, Tuesday. Okay, let's see, GU on a Tuesday, right? Okay, GU on a Tuesday, where is that? Tuesday here, okay. 15 minutes should be on the 15 minutes. Geo on a Tuesday. Uh, I can't remember what direction it is. It give me a second. Let me check. Ah, uh. one second. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. So what we're doing a review uh, for you guys is so you can actually take note of the mistakes and of course when you're doing well, you win, right? Also take down, take note on or journal down on why you actually win as well. Because if you win, right, you wanna journey down and say, okay, if I win this, right, how can I replicate it? How can I do it ten times more, twenty times more? So that's the importance of it journaling, whether you being a loss or a win. Okay, so I have found the entry for GU one point two four two nine five. Okay, one point two four two nine five. Okay, wait, let me just two nine one point two four. Two nine five. Okay, let me just draw it out. Okay, let me just clear the chart first. 1.24295. It was given on a let's see, where is it? Da -da -da. Okay, it was given on the 11th of April. 358. Okay, 358. 358. Uh, okay. Around here, a uh, tree uh, around here. Okay, so we had a larger time frame stop loss, was all the way up here. All the way up, I remember I covered this high, yes, a uh, roughly a 30 pip stop loss. La. So essentially, it started to run about a one is to one, la, plus minus around there. Ooh, okay, where's it? Like that. Okay, stop loss is a bit tighter, like that. Okay, yeah, so essentially, right, I entered this, this position knowing that there is inefficiency over here, right. And obviously, price rejected this area, rejected this area. And this level over here is also what I call trend line liquidity, trend line which I will go through in, in the future. Right? I think right now it's still a bit too complex for you guys. This is what I call the trend line liquidity because these two highs here failed to mitigate the, the unmitigated order block over here. Right. So this gives me some, um, you know, it, tell, it tells me, like, okay, cool. We could, we could potentially sell here with stops above this area to wait for price to react and then come down lower. So obviously, price nearly stopped us out, right? So for those of you that held, obviously, you guys would have won, right? And the moment price started to melt past this level here, I told you guys to put SL to break even, take partials. And therefore, we profited roughly, a, say, 20 pips, 20 pips plus minus lah, before hitting back SL to break even, right? Okay, so yeah, so this so this is the last pair that we'll be going through today. So let's just see one other question. Uh, this one last question I'll answer, right? Okay, from Tim. For the R, sometimes the TP set is like very far away. So the SL set to BE and took partial and the rest you will prefer to let it run until hit TP. So normally when you, when you take SL to break even, right? What I'll do is just let, let, let the thing run. But if it hits back to our break even, and I do see personally for me, if I do see another re-entry, I would re-enter if it doesn't break my trading rules, right? So normally, if we were to give a re-entry, we will say, okay, cool. This is a re-entry recovery trade, right? Because obviously, we hit SL break even, right? And then it takes us out for $0 profit. So when we say, okay, re-enter this price, okay, cool. You guys can go, go ahead and re-enter. But we, we don't really give re-entries at this point of time right now because the market condition is, you know, last week was more, it was slower la, because of CPI. Okay, so, so you understand, Tim? So normally when we tell you SL break even, SL break even really, because it's running in at least 10, 20, 30 pips in profit. So you don't want to risk the fact that if it comes back down to your to your break even, then you lose all your profits. You don't you don't even take partials. So that's why you want to secure the gain for you. Okay? 
if not, that is all we have for today, right? I hope you guys have benefited something. If you guys have benefited some, uh, and learned something from today, type one in the chat right now. Come, come, come. Type one in the chat right now. 